my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the beginning, God created. God was the creator. As creator, God designed the purpose for his creation. As God's creature, we must live according to the creator's design. His design is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The love of God involves nothing less than the whole person. We love him by first making the decision to do so, and then by devoting all that we are to the task of loving him. Loving God means that whatever we do, we do with the express purpose of bringing honor to the Lord. At times, we will suffer. At times, we will experience pleasure. But neither suffering nor pleasure is the goal. The goal is to love God across the whole aspects of our lives. Jesus not only told us that we are to love God, he also told us how we are to love God. He broke it down for us to emphasize that the totality of our being is involved in loving Him. We love God with all our heart. When we love Him exclusively, Him and Him alone. We love God with our soul when we find our satisfaction in Him more than anything, any other person or thing. We love God with all our mind when we make decisions to obey His every command. We love God with all our strength when we persevere in the face of every trial. When Jesus said we are to love God with all these aspects of our being, it was another way of saying that every part of man is involved in loving God. Our desires, those which will please and honor God. Our affections, that we love those things that God loves. Our purposes, that we pursue those things that God would have us pursue. Our will, that we choose that which is good in our lives. Our feelings, that we subject our feelings to the truth of God's word. Our character, that we pursue holiness, sacredness, and purity. Our thoughts, that we meditate on the truth of God's word. Our strengths, that we live every day in the light of God's holy will. God does not tell us to love Him only. He also tells us to love others. Love of our neighbors flows from a heart that loves God. If we were left with only the first great commandment, loving God, perhaps someone could make a case for retreating to a place of serenity and communing with God. However, that is not what God has in mind. Jesus makes certain that we do not retreat, but that we become involved in expressing the love of God to those around us. His command forces us to be involved in human relationships. 
practically the spiritual and corporal works of mercy give us a model of how we should treat on the others counseling the, the doubtful instructing the ignorant admonishing the sinner comforting the sorrowful forgiving injuries bearing wrongs patiently praying for the living and the dead feed the hungry give tin to the thirsty shelter the homeless give alms to the poor visit the sick visit the prisoners bury the dead brothers and sisters jesus went to the cross because his love for god the father and his love for human beings in need of salvation we too are to love god and love others two commandments are in one <laughs>